Today we are going to fit a plastic window board to a bathroom. Plastic being advantage of it is already pre painted or pre finished and it is waterproof. So the thing is going to have disadvantage to it, that it could scratch and obviously get the scratches out. But on reflection, I think there's more gains than negatives as opposed to a timber one. So here we go. This is a piece I've cut off of the, the board that I'm going to place on there. Um, already I found out that there's 5mm difference between the back of the reveal to the front on both sides. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to let the window board into there to make a better job of it. Um, so I'm going to use this so I don't mess up my final seal. So what I'm going to do now is just cut out a notch so that this can fit in the wall. that's got the beading at this stage there's going to be some collateral damage but we'll see the one is a polyfiller we'll sort that out I usually grind them off actually but because it always happens they can all be filled back in and all you do then Okay, that's that one ready, prepped up. So using the template of the seal to <coughs> so I don't damage a new seal when I put it in, but not new matters. I've got a little piece of um, chrome finish to go across the top of the tiles there. You can if you wish to carry all that way on. In this instance, I'm not going to because um, I just think it'll look odd if that goes to the end and that one's a different size that end. So I'm just Now I know my overall distance of the board to cut. Which is going to be 1775 in this instance. Just write it on here, 1775. Just get the board. Right, this is the board. No, I'm not actually going to take the covering off because I'm going to paint in here as well when I finish and um, put some polyfill in there, just crack some one thing or another. So, this is the board that's going to go in. Obviously, clearly, you can see I cut that to six foot, it's not going to fit. So, I'm going to measure off here the same distance. Yeah, 
1775, which is just. Oh, no, that's wrong. Seven seven five, so it's just there. Now I saw that's that one. Right, I'm not going to cut it up here because it's quite too much mess. But down there, I'm going to put a nine a right angle on there and cut through that. We have an additional issue on this seal. Obviously, you always never get them to fit perfect, but the distance of the seal is shorter. Than that, but I'll come on to that when I do the first cut. Okay. Let's make the tools out of the way. Right, just another thing just before we carry on, just to make sure everything looks okay. But it should be anyway, because when I did the plastering, plaster to the edge of the external, external seal there, so it should be okay. You get quite a few problems when the actual window is in incorrect and if you want to put the seal level it looks odd because <laughs> it goes like that on there. But let's just have a quick look and see what it's like now. So you can all see it. Yeah, the bubble's just a little tiny bit out so that's going to have to come up just a little tiny bit but that's not an issue, that's great. Right, okay. So let's see if this fits alright. First cut, just pull a bit of that off that end. You don't have to perk it, if you get it wrong, you have got a chance to pull it back with some silicone around the groove. I mean, I will be silicon, put silicon round there and round there. Top tip for silicon, do not put your silicon on before you paint, because you can't paint anywhere near it. It will just go absolutely, there we go. Uh, Brilliant, look at that. There we go. So it's fitting good, but in a bathroom especially, I want this to be tight against here. So I've got to work out now how much to cut off and put back in there. So obviously I've got to cut that distance there, and that distance there, and I can already feel that they're different, which is always a problem. <laughs> and they never come up square. I know they're different, I can feel it. Okay, so what we do here, this is uh, another way of looking as well, so even here I can see it, on an off cut, so if I put that there where it's going to end up. I can see that in there is going to be... About 12 mil. So, 12. so I'm going to measure it this way. That makes 25. Which comes to just that. According to that, I've got to cut it off approximately 11 millimetres. And I said 12 on that, so that's fine. So I've got a little bit more, which is fine because I want to put a nice bead of silicon down the back of there anyway. So that size is 12 mil to cut off. This side is going to be smaller, I know. I don't know if you can all see that. Set in which ooh, looks about five mil. If I measure across there, across there, yeah, it's about five. Yeah, about well, six mil on this. Six mil. So there we go, 6mm that side, 12mm that side. So to cut that, I make myself straightforward enough. I'm going to measure off 12 off here.
Just put a right power on that. That's the right hand side and then the left hand side. Six mil on this one. Right, what I'll do downstairs again, I'll put a straight edge from there, it's the left side, straight edge from there to there and cut it off. It's going to be a bit of a tricky one that is because usually what you do, get normal saw and then just saw it parallel with the guard on the sword rail. This is going to be a freehand cut because obviously because it's different, that was tall, that was six. Um, yeah, top tip again. Always cut into the finished edge. So if I was cutting that, I'd cut into it this way. The saw blades like that. If you've got a jigsaw, because a jigsaw works back to front, it pull it out, it chip it all off the edge there. So a jigsaw, you have to do it upside down. Just on the right top. Same as circular saw. Circular saw comes this way, so it chip all that finished edge off. So if you're doing a circular saw, you have to do it back to front. Okay. Back in a minute. Right, there's the cut made. Uh, where's the other piece? Cut the piece off it. And as you can see from that, I cut this from the inside, the underside, to cut it with circular saw. So I cut it from the inside so it doesn't chip the material. If you can see that, put it up there. No chipping on the material because it cuts from back to front. But anyway, that bit of scrap. Let's see how it fits, which is more importantly. Let's put it in here like this. There we go, down there. Pull that back. Great, perfect. That's just where I want it. Little gap there, so it's looking a bit on the edge there. That's all good there. That's gone right up against there. That's gone right up against there. There's a little curvature in the wall, I think. But yeah, there's hardly any movement on that, you see. So now we come to fix it. Just show you something else while I'm here. Right, this is spirit level again, yeah, which is bob on. I haven't got problems with that. If it was a drift, what you can do, if you it out, there's two methods I use. I know for under the fact under here there's timber. There's a bit of timber under there, so to bring the windowsill up. So you can put screws in there. I'll show you actually. Let's screw for demonstration purposes. I don't need it on this one. But if it is too far out, what you can do screw that way down. And screw that back out, then you can make the level up with this. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is pretty obvious, which is obviously sims, the plastic sims, put down all the way across here, wherever you want it, make it back up. Right, let's go to fixing. This is obviously what I've done, I've channeled this out, so it holds it a little bit there, and it holds it there, which is really good. Again, because it's plastic, it's not going to move a great right deal, but it will move. So what I use is grip film, or pink grip, whatever you want to use, or silicon. So I think... This is about finished, so I've only got a little bit of this. Yeah, I think it's quite good. No, I'm not going to use that since it's come off, I think, now. I always better place it with timber. Traditionally, I do like timber. No question about that. But this is just a much, much more practical way of doing it. No, I don't know. What I've done previously here, I've put some scouring marks in it just to get a bit of a fix on it. Again, you might not have that. I plastered all nicely, I put a trim in there so it all came up level. So I just get the dust of it off and all we're doing this, you make like a, I call it Christmas cake, like that, like that, like that. Right, 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 Make sure when you're doing this it's even. What you don't want is big lumps that won't go down. Trust me, you won't get the silicon back off. It'll just 
practically impossible to get this off now. It may all come off, but it ripped the plaster off with it. Put it down in there, not only needs it. Put it down in there. Right, okay. I'm fitting. to do is pull this up, pull it up and over, there we go, and stick it down, that's already on solid, I can feel it already, that's lovely, that will not move, and then to put that on top of there, just any weight, just to hold it down a little bit, which is fine, you don't want to weigh it too much else it will go the other way, but I can feel that is binding into that, and there we are, finished for now, Obviously I've got a paint, so I'm not going to show you the finished article just yet. So I've got a silicon round there, or down the back, or down that round there. Back again to finish off the fitting of the seal. Um, I never usually seal when I've stuck the seal down, I always do it the day after. But um, anyway, you can do it at the same time, but it's just something I like to do. If you can do it, I always do it the day after. What I'm going to do here as well is obviously seal all the way around there as well. No, I didn't really need it, but it gets a nice finish because the plaster is right into there, but obviously you can see the plaster line. So if you go around with the sealant, it gets a nice line on it. Um, tools that you need for the job are obviously one sealant and a sealant gun. There's different types of these around. I've got two sealants here. This is, um, shall we say, economical stuff. Um, it says it's mild resistant, but whether it is or not, I don't know. But as it's not been in a showered area, I use the cheaper stuff. If you've got a showered area, then I would always go for the premium brand. Always, every single time. The amount of houses I've been to, when a bath, there's a shower over the bath and it goes all mouldy. So that's just a pointer for you. So sealant, done. Come back to them last. Scrape it if you've got too much on, which always happens. Knife to cut the end off your sealant ends. A bucket for your rubbish, because uh, and blue roll to clean off any excess that you might have or little bits on the um, adapters. I use these. Most builders do this, which is great. It looks okay sometimes, but it's not always a consistent finish. And plus the fact you get sealant all over your hands. I usually wear rubber gloves for this. Um, but at the moment I can't get any, <laughs> so uh, I've just got to be really, really careful. I've got these little beauties, which are for sealant. They're rubber edged, and as you can see, they've had quite a bit of use. That one's just a slightly different profile to that one, but they're virtually the same. Do you want to do a bit of today? I'm going to use that one. Uh, just make sure the edges are up, but they're really rubbery, and they leave a lovely finish. Okay, right. Obviously, most people would start there, don't start at the top, and work down and finish off there. So, right, here we go. Right, there's not much left in that one, so I'm going to put a new one in. I'm going to be a stingy I am, I'll use the same nozzle on the next one. So, I'll just pull that off there, pull that off there. And so that's why you've got the bucket there for it, but with a bit of rubbish in. I've already cleaned down here, but sort of thing, make sure it is dust free. That's the biggest thing, is dust free and bit free. Because any little bit will pick up on there and drag it along. Okay, put that in there, like so. And we're good to go. of uh, silicon emergencies. I'll just put myself a couple of spares ready to go just in case, especially when I've got gloves on. I just hate getting that stuff on my hands. Right, okay. The main thing I've noticed in doing this over the time I've been doing it is that you feel like you want to put too much on but you don't really, you have to take it off. So here we go then. It 
doesn't have to be perfect on the first run because obviously you're using a profile of a let's get a bit of blue roll ready. See that that's what comes off. You always have excess. Not really noticed a bit now, I need a bit extra in there. Again, I need a bit more up in there. Okay, and then on my hands, that's a successful run. I need a little tiny bit. If you're doing top ups like this, you must get onto it straight away. Silicon is totally unforgiving. Make sure you clean your adapter if you're doing this. Leave it more than two or three minutes and you've had it. It starts snagging and everything. She looks a right mess. The golden rule on silicon is that's got it. Never revisit. Okay, so there's a top one. See how easy that was? Well, make it look easy anyway. That's it, got it. That's it. Perfect. That's it, lovely. Just make sure you put all your silicon away. It's just absolutely awful to get off. Right, then either side doesn't really matter. Always clean the nozzle off as well, first time. Sides at the same time, but um, just like take the time a bit. So just knock a bit out of the top there, then run down here with this. See, so brings off to excess again. See a bit extra on this there, just go back over that. Too much or not enough. There we go. You can do it if you're quick, but don't try and do it after a couple of minutes. And what you have to do with the corners, because you can't get it in, your wet finger job. Let's put a bit in there off that. But again, be careful you don't revisit it. So clean off the nozzle. Again, it depends on what kind of gap you've got and what your ceiling is, is to uh, how much you put in really. This is a bigger gap on the side, so I'm going to put a bit more out. When I've left it when it's just like this before, not gone down with the profiler. Just like that. There we go. Out of the way. And there we go with this. Just nice and steady. Sometimes you have to rub it off early. As you get too much build up, it goes up close the wall. But always do this before you paint. 
because silicon will repel water-based paints. It goes all bubbly and horrible. Yeah, see in that one. I'll show you the opposite. I've got too much on that one. It's not a problem. So I can just go down there and have him off that one. There we go, and down there. Like so, there we go. So, lovely. Great. That's that done. Right, now for the real part, the end of the video, which is obviously the seal, as you can see, or here. It's all far, it's not going anywhere. Plastic, okay, probably doesn't look as good as timber maybe, but durability and practicality in a bathroom, absolutely fantastic. But as, as I said to you before, it's an external fascia board. This is a thick one, not a thin one. You can get overboards or replacement boards. This is a replacement board so it's a bit thicker but well worth the time taking time to do it so here we go now this gap along here is a bit bigger so what I'm going to do this time is apply quite a bit more and the good thing about down here is is that both sides are plastic so I haven't got a problem with getting it off the wall or any painting issues that might arise from it. Try and squib it in to the gap as much as you possibly can. Then you'll get a real good seal. Oops, a bit too much there. You can always tell me you get too much, it pushes itself back out. But don't worry if you've got a bit extra on your first run. Hang those off. I'm oh, definitely going to need some more on this one. I know it seems overkill with the paper roll, but trust me, you don't want to hang your hands or anywhere else. It's not, not good. Oh, here we go. Just to get this a nice line on there. I use it again really. But... You can do the profile to any way you want. You can do it at an angle if you want a, a thicker sort of rounded bead. It's entirely it's your own preference really, how you want to do it. I'll do both. It depends, it depends what you're doing really. See there, I can see that. I need to clean a bit more off, but because you're quick, that's why you have to be quick with this, I can just go back over it again. Silicon's alright as long as you're quick, so no more than possibly four minutes. I mean it's still wet after that, but you just will not be able to do this, it'll drag. You go like a paint run. I mean you just do not want that, it looks absolutely awful. If you do it with a finger, you see, that's the old fashioned method, you'll wind up either side, and we have a big curve. What I do when I've finished, I do a close up of this so you can see it. Right, I've got a big gap on this side here, so the wall's a different size to the windowsill. I'll we'll just scrape it back down there like that. Okay, Yeah, I'll do some close-ups when uh, I just finish this bit. Oops. There we go. That's it. That's good now. It's all good. But don't put anything near it, obviously for you know at least a couple of hours. It'll be dry in like 10 minutes, but I never risk it. We'll do anything dusty or painting around it. Because <laughs> it will just attract it. Like uh, the proverbial. I won't use the words, here we go, just down the side, like so, the bleak. It's got a bit more paint to touch up here, I think, but uh, try and work around that. Just 
down the side there like that. I'm going to put chrome trim on there, so don't worry about that bit. Everybody roll ready. It's two little tiny bits. That's good. That. That's good. And make sure your tool's always clean before you go back to it. It leaves a drag mark. do it with a finger, most people do. Um, I'm just saying you get a bit of an uneven finish sometimes, that's all. And it also tends to push it up the sides, it tends to push it like that when you do the finger. Whereas this, you can see it's a pure 45. That's got it. But what I do if there's a little, just a little bit, see that's starting to go off now already. Let's put that in there like that, like that. That side's done. So then just come along here. There we go. Done. Done. Obviously, you never leave, leave that on your tool because you just won't be able to get it off. It comes off this rubber part, as you can see, the other bits are still stuck on there. Right, let's clean that off and I'll give you a close up of it. Because right, you can't see from that distance. I'm right, not sure it's not touching anything. Right, you can see the close up of that. Hope you can see it anyway. And then a close up of that. Got a bit more paint to it. Right, that is all finished now. I'm very, very happy with all that. Just got a little bit more paint to touch in there, a little bit more paint under there. Won't go too well because I've got silicon on it, but um, I'll see how it's going up. Thank you very much for watching.